After almost five years of fairly heavy use, our Samsung inductive range wouldn't detect cookware on the left two cooktop elements. The fix was fairly easy and cost nothing but time. I'll start with an overview of the problem and then show the detailed disassembly and fix. I'm very happy with this range, so if I didn't fix it, I'd likely be spending for a new one, with this one going straight into the landfill. From searching the internet, this seems to be a fairly common problem related probably to a bad solder joint on one of the cooktop control boards. I've seen pictures of this all over the internet, exactly the same failure as mine. The failure is identifiable by simple visual inspection. I love this range, so I was happy to re try repairing it. I have some experience soldering, so the fix was fairly easy and essentially free. I have some guarded confidence that the repair will hold, but also kind of looked like solder wasn't wetting the relay contact as I expected. So maybe something's going on with the plating on that component's contacts. The first failure took four and a half years. I'll update the comments on this video if I gather more information over time. If you aren't confident in your soldering abilities, I assume that board level replacement parts are available from appliance parts suppliers. If you go that route, have your serial number handy, because there are significant design changes using the same model number, but different revisions. I have Rev01, which I found after a lengthy convection fan replacement ordeal. I don't know if that impacts the induction boards. Online, I saw a reference to someone spending $700 for the center and left control boards, but that also include the cost of a technician coming out to look and telling them they should just take it to the dump. If I were going to do a board level replacement, I'd start with a center high voltage board. The repair took my son and I around three hours start to finish. It requires a number two Phillips screwdriver, soldering iron, solder, flux and flux cleaner or alcohol, and optionally, solder wick and a utility knife. You will need to work on both the back and front of the range and have a table or the like where you can work on this cooktop. This range operates on 240 volts and 40 amps. Make sure the range is unplugged. The boards inside contain capacitors which can store electricity when the range is unplugged. Perform this operation at your own risk. If it burns down your house or electrocutes you, I'm not responsible. The repair involves removing the back, removing the control panel, removing the cooktop, disassembling the cooktop to get at the boards, repairing the boards, and then the reverse to put it back together. I used a series of bowls to hold screws from each step, back, control panel, cooktop disassembly, circuit boards. There are a number of screws holding the silver back on. Not all screws need to be removed. Then the bottom of the silver panel swings out and can be removed from the tabs at the top. While you're back there, there are two black screws at the very top and back corners. These need to come out. Also, there are two wires running from the cooktop down to where the plug wire connects. These need to be disconnected as well. The control panel has many cables connecting it but you may be able to carefully lift and rotate the control panel so it can sit on the cooktop. I just held it while I photographed it and unplugged the cables from the controls. Open the oven door, and you may want to place a pan sheet covering the gap between the oven door and the oven cavity in case you drop any screws. Under the control panel are four screws. Remove them. Then the control panel swings up and can be removed. Carefully sit it on top of the range without damaging any of the wires. I held it, but later found it can turn and sit on the cooktop. You can either unplug the cables from the dials, or I'd recommend further up those cable groupings is a large connector for each pair of controls. I'd recommend unplugging the connectors at that location because then it's easier to reconnect them. Take photos if you disconnect at the dials so you can refer to it for reassembly. There's also a ribbon cable connector on the touch panel that will need to be removed. There are two screws on the front corners behind where the control panel was. Remove them. 
and there are two screws on the back corners under the cooktop, which you may have already removed. Disentangle the cable running down the back to the power connector. It's bundled with the other cable sets. The cooktop weighs maybe 50 pounds. Have a place cleared to set it upside down for the next steps. The cooktop lifts off. Be careful of the cables coming off it so they don't get damaged. The glass is connected to the electronics by three screws along each side. Remove these and put the cooktop somewhere safe. I think they're over $200 for a new one. Each burner element has a red and black cable screwed to it and another connector with two very fine wires running out of it. There's also a ribbon cable connected to a circuit board for each burner. Disconnect all of these. There are so many different screws here. The ones and the dimples need to come out and the screws along the outside. Note that there are two different types of screws here, fine threaded in the dimples and next to one burner, coarse threaded in the sheet metal. Use your favorite method for keeping track of them. The fine pitch screws go anywhere there is a standoff. I removed the screws around the outside and then just lifted gently to see what other screws needed removing. There's also a ribbon cable running to the display module that will need to be disconnected. It's easiest to lift the opposite end of the cover up and then disconnect the cables that run to the display module. I just reached under the side. Set the top aside. There are left and right boards that are for each pair of elements. Between these are three boards, the display control board, the microcontroller board with all the little tiny components, and at the back near the fan shroud is the main burner board. This is the one that I had the problems with. The failure is on the back of the board, so it needs to come off. Disconnect the connectors and cables and remove the screws. I removed both the center and left board for inspection. Remember, it was my left two burners that weren't working. On the back of the board, inspect the large solder pads for one that looks burned around the center. I inspected all the joints and also looked at the fronts looking for any obvious burned components, but I only saw the one bad joint. I also used an ohm meter to test the fuses since I was in here, but they were fine. To repair the joint, I used solder wick to wick out all the existing solder from the joint and used a utility knife to clean off the faces of the relay post. It seemed kind of ugly. I've seen others that just packed flux into the joint and resoldered, but I wanted to try to clean off the post. Pack the area with flux and resolder the joint as normal. Make sure to get the joint filled and look good. I kept seeing a black spot in the solder, like part of the post was sticking out and hadn't wet with solder. This is what makes me wonder if there's a problem with those posts that prevents the solder from properly adhering, leading to this issue in the first place. If the problem happens again, I may see if I can source some new relays. I then cleaned off the flux using flux cleaner. Alcohol should also work. In my case, I didn't follow the cardinal rule. I fully assembled it before testing. Usually that's guaranteed to cause it to fail, but in this case, it worked out fine. Putting it back together is the reverse of taking it apart. Be sure to connect all the cables and get all the screws back in. I'm not entirely surprised at reports I've heard of service techs recommending just replacing the range. A full cooktop assembly is probably on the order of the value of a four-year-old range maybe even over. And most techs probably aren't going to want to spend two to three hours on a maybe fix, even if they are aware of the problem and its resolution. In my case, I love this range, and if it went to the landfill, I'd just be buying a new one. This was especially nice as it didn't involve buying any parts that might or might not fix the problem, but I've been willing to buy the center and left control boards to possibly save the cost of a new range. It's a gamble, though. I'm a little disappointed that Samsung has this sort of problem. Less than five years of life uh, out of range seems a little bit light. This seems like a fairly simple manufacturing or parts problem. Isn't soldering relays to boards a solved problem? To be fair, we're really fairly heavy users of it. 
maybe our five years is the average person's 20 years. So go save a range from the landfill.